So we're just going to repeat those four spinal movements. So the first one was a basic flexion. So hop down on your mat, on your bum. Grip like this, behind the back of the legs. Key thing is the capacity to get the hips to the slump back. So start to walk the heels in towards your groin, but still keep some of the foot in contact with the floor. And you're trying to get the hips to roll back. Then slowly let the thumb hang off your arms and then let the whole middle back start to round. And head position is optional. If you're comfortable, letting the chin come all the way forward, do that. Breathing deeply into the back of the body and try to let the shoulders relax. Try not to pull them up towards the ears. Imagine there's a wall just a couple of inches behind your shoulder blades and every time you breathe out you're trying to slump back a little bit more, get more curve in that part of the spine. Something else you can try very gently is try and just pull your belly button in towards your spine a little bit and see if that helps you get a little bit more pelvic tilt happening. Do it nice and smoothly so nothing cramps. Breathe and relax there. Wherever you feel the stretch most strongly this time, breathe as deeply as you can into that little bit of tissue and each time you breathe out, say to yourself, it's going to relax a little bit more. When you're ready to come out, just take a nice deep breath in and gently pull on the arms. And up you come, let go, and roll the shoulders the other way. Good. Okay, gentle back bend. So turn over, face down, and stretch yourself out long on your mat. Stretch yourself out completely, make sure you've got plenty of room. Arms out to the front. And before you do anything, just wriggle, rock the hips, legs from side to side, trying to feel completely relaxed soft body muscles and lower back muscles. Good. Okay, here's how we get into this exercise. Roll the body over towards one arm, one outstretched arm, so that you can pull the other elbow up into what you think will be your final position. Forearm down there. And then use the other arm, press it down through the floor, press yourself over, and then pull that elbow into position. And just pause there, breathe comfortably, and check that your abdomen is relaxed. You're letting it sag into the floor. You might need to reposition the elbows. You might find you want them to turn a bit further forward, maybe a fraction wider. You need to find a position where you feel supported, but you're also able to relax completely. Little wriggle of the hips again to check that your bottom muscles have stayed relaxed. Head position is up to you. If you're comfortable looking to the front, do that. You need to take the chin forward, do that. If you want to add the neck part here, have a go at this. Open your mouth as wide as you can and slowly take the neck back into extension with the jaw open. Don't push it too hard, just explore that and then have a go at closing the teeth at the top there. Breathe deeply and every time you breathe out, let the front of the body sag into the floor. Good. If you added the neck part, reverse your way out. So open the jaw, bring the head forward again. And let's add a second movement. Just hold yourself there in the centre position. And then have a little play with looking around the corner past one shoulder. See if you can see your heel. And then slowly come back through the middle and go the other way. So you're adding a different spinal movement to that gentle back bend. And just have a couple of goes on each side. Turning the head, you can use the muscles on the side there to really pull yourself around a little bit further if you want to go a bit further. And come back one more time in the second direction. Are your bottom muscles still relaxed? And then Come back to the centre position and then just slide yourself out onto your chest. Wriggle around a little bit. So you get 
quite practiced, you'll still probably find that some little muscles somewhere either side of the spine did tense up a little bit, so you just wriggle them out. And then when you're ready, how about you just roll over onto your back and do a little curl up. Just roll over and curl yourself up. Just a nice little round out. But with the leg action, you want to curl up so that you feel your tailbone curl up off the floor. You could do a different little round out if you prefer. Rock the legs from side to side or do the forward backward rocking movement. Whatever makes everything feel super comfortable again after that little back bend. Scott and Doris are going back to the day number one. That's a nice one too. Okay, number three is the spinal rotation. So make sure you've got plenty of room to be stretched out completely with the arms out to the side like a crucifix. So part one or two is a little hip movement. So bend one knee, link the hands around the front of the shin there and play with a couple of different lines drawing that thigh as close into the body as you can. Use your arm strength to do that movement. Let's do a little contraction here. Hold that thigh as far in as you can. Hold it still with your arms and use the bottom muscles to try and press the leg away from the body. A little contraction there for the glutes. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, see if you can get some more movement there. Also, just ask yourself about the outstretched leg. Does it comfortably just rest on the floor or does it want to come up away from the floor as you draw the bent knee in? Okay, let's move into the rotation now. So, arms out on the floor like a crucifix. Bring the outstretched leg up, foot on the floor and shift the hips a little bit to the side towards the raised leg. Stretch the leg out again. Opposite hand comes to the outside of the bent knee and slowly roll the leg across the line of the body. If you feel you need to do an additional hip adjustment, do that. Just unweight the hips and shuffle it under. Try to have some part of the foot of that top bent leg touching something. Are you able to breathe comfortably? Every time you breathe out, more and more lip. Do a couple of contractions. First one, hold the bent knee still and very gently try and press it up to the ceiling. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, try and let that top leg go completely limp. And you might find the knee comes a bit closer to the floor. And now the counter rotation contraction. Hold the top knee still and ask yourself, how could I twist back to my back? Think about pressing the top hip back. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, your focus is on moving the top hip further through. Try and increase the rotation there. A couple more deep breaths in and out. And when you want to come out, you might want to continue over to your chest or just let go of the top bent knee and slowly roll back to your back. And just lie there for a couple of counts. Move it around a little bit. And the hips in particular. And let's do the same sequence on the other side. So bend the knee, bring it up towards your body. Have some different lines there if you find one thread with a good movement in the front of the hip joint. This is just the baby version of this. There's lots of ways to make it stronger in the glutes and the hamstrings, but we're just treating it as a how does my hip feel in this. Let's do the contraction here. Hold that bent knee hard in against the body and try the contraction. Try and press the thigh off using the glutes. And stop, take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, can you get more hip flexion? And then let's do the rotation. 
arms out like a crazy bit, just to set yourself up. Bring the other foot flat on the floor, so you can shift the hips to the side of the raised leg. Stretch the other leg out again. Opposite hand to the outside of the bent knee. And breathing comfortably, slowly roll yourself across. If you need to adjust the bottom hip again, do that. Try and do it nice smoothly. You might be comfortable just looking up at the ceiling. You might want to try rotating the neck to look towards the outstretched arm. Can you breathe deeply everywhere into the torso? Can you relax a bit more with each out breath? Do the first contraction. Gently try and press the bent knee up to the ceiling. Don't let it move. Four, three, two, one, and stop. Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, try to let that leg go more deep. See if the knee will come a bit closer to the floor. And the second contraction. Just a little comment about the hand position on that bent knee. Wiggle the fingers around so you're actually holding them right down at the top of the calf there. You get a slightly stronger grip. And then try the second contraction. How would you twist the top hip back towards the floor? Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, take a deep breath in. And on the restretch here as you breathe out, your focus is on moving the top hip further through. couple more deep breaths in and out in your final position. And come out nice and slow, whichever way your body prefers. And very briefly, repeat that little curl up. In case you need to do the lower back muscles, just feel a little bit of tension after that twist, you just ease them out with this little movement. Okay, a little test of your abdominal strength. Can you lock yourself up? Good. Okay, all the way up to your feet. And let's do the side bend. So if in the earlier session you found there was a tighter side, make sure you do that first. Feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Bend the knees. Gentle tail tuck. Lift the chest. Hand on the hip. Thumb point into the front so it doesn't get squished. And as you breathe out, slowly bend to the side. Good. Choose a neck position that you know works for you. I like to just look down at the floor. Big, deep breaths. Focusing initially on breathing as deep into the waist on the stretching side as possible. Good. If you had a wall behind you, would your skull be on the wall and would both shoulders be on the wall? Just as a bit of a mental alignment guide. When you're ready, add the free arm, take it through the front. Doesn't matter where it ends up. Movement of that arm should draw the stretch more strongly through the waist, right up through the ribs, potentially right up into the lats, into the armpit. Have a go at actively reaching the top arm off the body. Can you still breathe comfortably? You want to be able to breathe and relax, not just making a shape, holding a shape. Let's have a little play with drawing the top shoulder back a fraction, just a little bit more, the shoulder, not necessarily the arm and then roll it forward a little bit. Tiny little changes of position of the top shoulder in relation to the bottom one. You might find there's all different lines there. And the dismount for the side bends is slowly roll through the front. And take a breath in as you stand up. A little wiggle around. Good. Okay, same thing on the other side. So, plenty of Put width so you feel nice and stable, bend the knees, tuck the tail, lift the chest, hand on the hip. Let's do a really exaggerated 
stand up really tall out of the waist before you bend to the side. Some people have <coughs> compression sensations when they bend to the side, so really exaggerating the lift up and over the bottom ribs can be, make it more comfortable. Do you feel weight on the support arm? It's not cosmetic, it's actually holding your torso in the side bend. Can you relax the neck? And when you're ready, add the other arm. Bring it through. Don't have any expectation of where it will end up. Just gauge how does the movement of that arm change the stretch through the side and keep gauging your breathing. Actively reach the top arm off the body. If you're looser through the side and or in the shoulder, by the knees, take the arm as far over towards the head as you can. Are you able to breathe into the waist, into the ribs, into the armpit on that top side? And then just have a little play, slow movements of the top shoulder, roll it back a little bit, and then roll it forward a little bit. Try to find some different lines that may be tight in the side bend. And dismount, roll slowly through the front. Take a deep breath in, up you come. And make sure you're not going to hit anyone next to you. This little washing machine. Good. Try to be really floppy. Everyone looks equally silly, so don't worry about that. Really floppy. Okay. We'll be good with that. 